everyone, and welcome to this special mini-sode of the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pair and partner in crime, Carmela. Hello! Nice, and we are the Wine Pair. So if you're new to the Wine Pair Podcast, these mini-sodes are just shorter versions of the regular podcast that we put together on weeks where we might be traveling or handling other life stuff. And so instead of tasting and reviewing two to three wines under $20 that are easy to find, which is what we usually do in our longer episodes, in these mini-sodes we focus more on things like wine etiquette, wine education, wine tips, things like that. And we try to make it fun and understandable to regular everyday people like us. Right. And our podcast is recommended by Decanter Magazine, which is kind of fun. So fun. But today, Carmela, we're going to talk about something controversial. Ugh. We're going to talk about why, as the kids would say, we think total wine is sus. Right? Well, you in particular. Yeah. And so I, it's true. I've been thinking about this for a while because look, I know that Total Wine can be convenient, but I really don't like shopping there. I know. And I'm just curious why. I mean, well, you always kind of think- had it out for them. I know. So I've been thinking about it and, and I'm going to tell you. But, and I've been lo- doing a little looking around online too, just to make sure that I'm not the only one and I'm not Good. the only one. Okay. What are people saying? Well, this, we're going to talk about why I think they're sus. But if you like Total Wine or BevMo or one of those big wine shops, that's fine. That's right. okay. We're not here to judge you. We're you just can here turn to turn us t- off now. No, don't turn us <laughs> off. That would be really don't it would make me cry. Oh you don't want to see God. me cry. I'm starting to sweat, but you don't no. want to see me cry. You actually don't want to see me sweat either. But anyway, we don't really. Well, I really don't like Total Wine. I don't know if you have an opinion on it, actually. I really don't. But you do the shopping, so I want you to be happy. Thank you. Thank you. She does. Trust me. She really, really, most of the time she's like, I just want you to be be happy. happy. This is such a lie. Okay. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I never go there. There are times. Yeah, it would be a total lie. There are times when I stop by mostly for this show because I know, one, I know people are going to go there and want to, and I want to find wines that people can find relatively easily. Two, I go there because they do have a big wine selection. They have like 8,000 wines in every store. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you can find wines there that can be more difficult to find in other places. And three, we have a total wine pretty close to where we live. I was just going to say. And so it's convenient. Yeah. Right? So that's easy. But there are a few reasons why total wine is a mixed reputation. And probably the one at the heart of it all is based on the concept of kind of the Walmart effect. Hmm. And that's the idea that a big store with a huge selection and national buying power pushes prices down by aggressively negotiating and cornering the distribution in an area when it comes in. So one of the effects of this is that when a store like Total Wine comes into an area, it really hurts, sometimes kills the The local competition. It does. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how often this happens, but there have been several lawsuits that Total Wine has been in where they've been accused of predatory tactics. Wow. So on that alone, I'm not really a fan. Like I I just what do you mean? This is well, like they go in, they go in and they you know, negotiate heavily with the distributor and try to ace out the other guys, like maybe incentivize them or whatever. And I just think that's unethical. I don't think that's fair business practices. Right. right. And like nothing kills local small businesses or impacts local communities like big mega stores coming into a town. Mm. Now, I understand that people can appreciate a store like Total Wine and maybe it has better prices than some other places. But I always say there's a price to pay for cheap. Sure. Yep. Buy cheap. Buy twice. But also, like, when you buy cheap, somebody's on the losing end of that deal. True. You get, you gain something, but there's somebody who has to lose because they have to give up margin or somebody's getting knocked out of business or something like that. Hmm. So another impact and, and probably the bigger reason for me from a wine quality perspective has to do with the wines that they decide to sell in their stores. And that by that, I mean specifically their winery direct wines. Hmm. And I think the winery direct wines has has a few effects. First is... They get a good deal on their winery direct wines from distributors or winemakers. And so they have a lot of these wines in their stores. Like if you go into their stores, it seems to me that a super high percentage of the wines are, say, winery direct on them. And many of these wines are difficult to find reviews on, um, which in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. But it does indicate to me that they're focusing on quantity or price rather than quality. Right. And and the way they're sourcing the wines is suspicious. It's sus to me. It's a little suspicious Hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. So Winery Direct does not in any way imply quality. What it does is it indicates price negotiation and bulk buying 
with second and third tier wine producers. In other words, ah. good wine producers don't need to do winery direct because people are like distributors and consumers are going to want their wines. So you're not talking about the best wines are not going to be winery direct wines because they don't need that kind of distribution or negotiation. Mm. You're going to have wines that are lower quality or lower tier wines that are in winery direct. So while you can find a lot of different regions and wines and styles in the store, I don't really trust the quality of Winery Direct very much. And I don't think their overall selection, even outside of Winery Direct, is all that great. Mm. So one of the things that I really liked when I first walked into the stores is that they divide their wines into regions. Like they have these parts of the store where you can see, you know, wines from Italy and wines from France and wines from Spain and wines from Germany. And that was like, oh, this is exciting. But the selection really isn't that great. Mm, that's I don't. Kind of a disappointment. Yeah, and a lot of it is because they do this winery direct, so you can find wines from Germany, but they're not. Oftentimes, they're not the best wines from Germany, and most of it again is this like crappy winery direct wine, and it feels like a low cost special. It's. Like, so how do you feel about the people who work there? I mean, I'm, I'm always thinking oh. like the local wine shops, like you people have a wine guy and like you kind of go to your wine guy to get some recommendations, suggestions. Maybe they can, you know, bring in something for you special. You have to build a little relationship with them. This is totally spot on to one of the comments I wanted to make. Hmm. I go in there, I often find their staff not very knowledgeable. Hmm. And it, it feels to me like going to a brokerage where the broker gets paid on a commission for selling specific products right? because they tend to push their winery direct wines and they don't seem to know a ton about the wines in general, if you can find anybody in the store to help you. But one of the things that they do is like, they have these little signs. Oh, this is Bobby's favorite wine, or this is Shirley's favorite wine. Who the heck is Bobby? Well, the other thing is, do you ever ask? No, 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 I don't. But these little signs are often next to winery direct wines. Uh And so I just feel like they're kind of like, partnering to yeah they're kind of yeah. like it's false it's not false advertising but it's like gaming the system hmm. so i feel it, the, I, and the other thing is it comes across as like home homegrown you know advice oh this is the local guy in the store a local woman in the store this is what they like but i don't think it's that i feel like it's dishonest i Maybe honestly just do making it up they might i don't know but there is a great article in our show notes did you know we have show wow. notes um on how others have found the same thing about ah. like a lot of this. The other thing is, while they have some high-end wines, their overall selection of top-tier wines is pretty anemic. Hmm. Like you can tell that they are not catering to wine enthusiasts. They're not catering to serious wine collectors or wine drinkers. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, but they focus on bulk priced negotiated wines that are not top tier. So when I go to a Total Wine, rather than being inspired, I kind of just get frustrated. Mm. And for such a huge store... You don't want to see Joe frustrated. No, no, you don't. I mean, I'm sweating already. Just mm-hmm. wait until I get frustrated. Mm-hmm. But but from a, a such a huge store, you'd think they'd have a really good selection or the wines would be really good, and they're really not. Some links in the show notes call them the goodwill of wine stores. Oh, which, you know, that's a tough one because a lot of people are really big on Goodwill. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes you want to go to Goodwill because you're going to find a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. But I think it's super hard to find hidden gems at Total Wine. Mm -hmm. And if you want a selection of wines that are global, I think you have much more luck going to your local Trader Joe's. And you know how I feel about Trader Joe's. I think you have much more luck going to your local Trader Joe's with the small wine selection and finding wines from all over the world that are probably going to be okay. Hmm. Like, I just think that. Yeah, good suggestion. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just find, again, like, this is kind of average, mass-produced. It's like going to Olive Garden or, you know, or Maggiano's Little Italy and saying, oh, I got a great Italian dinner. It's Ah. like, it's not, it's it's fine. You probably enjoyed it, but it's not really. Authentic or... And I'm not, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just saying, I'm getting your point. Yeah. And I think to your point too, like, well, first of all, you may be, you might as well just go to a local grocery store if you're kind of looking for these wines, because it's like, you're going to get the same quality at a local grocery store, but kind of to the point you were making earlier, you know, if you go to a local wine shop, a small wine shop, you're going to get somebody who cares about the wine 
thinks a lot about the selection. This is their baby. They're trying to make good, either trying to build things for the customers that come in the store. They're not a big mm. distributor or wine shop who's like, we don't care who comes in. We, we sell these wines and you're going to buy them. Well, and they're handpicking probably every bottle. Exactly. It's yeah. like going into a local Italian restaurant that's run by some guy who's from or some woman who's from Milano or whatever, right? And they're they care about the food. They're they're creating it themselves. So you can have your olive garden on the corner, but that's not authentic. Like these are people who are really putting their heart and soul into it. And I kind of feel the same way about Total Wine versus a local wine store. Like mm-hmm. we have a local wine store um Esquin in Seattle. It's a pretty decent sized store and they have a but it's not huge. It's not a warehouse size store. And they have great selection. But you know they're hand-picked. Right. Like, you know these are not wines you're just going to find everywhere. They're wines that they really are taking the time. Mm. So, anyway, if you want to really learn about wine and expand your understanding of wine or just find better quality of wines, I think other than listening to our podcast, which you right. should be doing right. all the time. Because we do try to cover a lot of ground in terms of types of wines and areas of the world and everything like that. I do think it's really beneficial to go to a local wine shop, meet the person there, see what they recommend and why, tell them the kinds of experience. wines you like. Totally. It's and, a wine experience. Yeah. And you're and you're supporting a local business. And I think you'll find a real way to educate yourself on wine by doing that. I love it. Yeah. So look, I'm a bit judgy. I will admit it. I'm a bit judgy, but I think you can. I'm glad do... we just recorded that. Thank you. Thank you. It's on tape. Mm-hmm. It's not really tape, but we call it tape. Mm-hmm. But we think you can do better than Total Wine, and you don't have to really try that hard. You no. can just find a local wine shop around the block, and you'll do great. So there it is, Carmela. Nice. That's it. I, that okay. was really convincing. There you go. So if you want to see the sources for some of the content today and get the links to learn more, you can come to our website, thewinepairpodcast.com. You look for this mini-sode, open up the show notes, and and there's a really fun string from a, a wine website called Wine Berserkers called Triggered at Total Wine. It's, huh. it's I have the link to it. It's super fun to read. Oh, gosh. Triggered at Total Wine. Uh, and then you can also check out our other mini-sodes and our regular-sized episodes on our website or your favorite podcast service or app you can follow us on instagram at the wine pair podcast you can visit our website as i said and you can always reach out to us at joe at the wine pair podcast.com and you know we hope that you'll follow us and we hope that you'll subscribe and we hope you'll give us a nice rating and review and more than anything we hope that you'll just reach out to us and, and tell us and, some thoughts you have yeah maybe tell us about your favorite local wine shop Ooh, that would be really be fun. fun to give yeah. people shout outs and we've done this before but we'll add it to our show notes if you give us some ideas we'll tell you like hey if you're ever in shreveport i don't even know where shreveport is i don't know why i can't of all the cities i could have come up with i came up with shreveport and i'm not even sure well i think it's louisiana but i don't even know what state it's in but it sounded good if you're in you know like charlottesville or in shreveport i don't know i'm making up towns that i've never been to Anyway, no, we, we would love that. We would love that. We would love that. Anyway, He's thank the you for listening to us. We'll see you soon. I like, like I'm this. I like 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 this.